بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد One of the most difficult conversations for us to have as Muslims is the conversation of race and color. Classism and racism was something that was not alien or foreign to the Prophet ﷺ's community. They came from the pre-Islamic era of Asariya, tribalism, racism, classism, putting people in different classes. And Islam came to do away with all of that. And the only classism that we have in Islam is a person who is fearful of Allah and someone who doesn't fear Allah. Al-Barru wal-Fajr. Righteous and unrighteous. Al-Muttaqi. Someone who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and someone who doesn't fear Allah. Al-Salih wal-Qalih. Someone who is righteous and someone who is not righteous. These are the only classes that we have in Islam. There is no upper class, middle class, lower class in, in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is definitely black, there is definitely white, there is definitely red. Evidenced by the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his last khutbah, لا فضل لعربي على عجمي ولا لعجمي على عربي ولا لأبيض على أسود ولا لأسود على أبيض إلا بالتقوى الله جل وعلا But there is no virtue over an Arab over a non-Arab nor a non-Arab over an Arab nor a black man over a white man nor a white man over a black man except with taqwa But that doesn't mean that there isn't color Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أقربكم عند الله أتقاكم that O oh mankind we indeed are created you or we created you from one male and one female and that we've spread from that one male and one female many different nations and tribes لِتَعَارَفُوا أَلِي هُنَا سَبَبِيَّ يعني السبب الوحيد في هذا لِتَعَارَفُوا لِتَعَارَفْ بَعْضُكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضُ He said that I made you into different nations and tribes and the Arabic particle that was used is the lamb and the lamb here is called سَبَبِيَّ meaning the reason لِتَعَارَفُوا so the reason so that you may know and acknowledge one another Today we have a world of racism or an era of racism, but it's, it's not as violent as it was years ago. And this form of racism is known as color blindness. We say, oh no, I don't see your color. We're all just Muslim. No, we're not all just Muslim. Because when you say you don't see my color, that means that you don't see me as an individual because I am color. This ayat, Abdullah bin Abbas he said this ayat was revealed, revealed about Thabit ibn Qais Thabit ibn Qais he walked into the Jumu'ah one day told the man move over make room for me in the, in the rank so one of the companions decided that he wasn't going to move over so Thabit ibn Qais he said anta ibn fulana yani fulana tasawda Ibn Tusoda. He said to the man, You are the son of a black woman. Because that was common in their society, that was a common insult. That was the quickest way to insult someone. Like in our society today, if we want to insult someone, we say, Your mother, right? And that's the quickest way to get underneath somebody's skin in our culture. But in their culture, if you was from a different you know, society, if you embraced Islam and you migrated to Medina, or you were a slave and then you were freed. Although the slaves, they were freed from the physical bondage of torture and persecution. They was freed from the spiritual bondage of shirk and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was still another bondage that they had to deal with. And that was social marginalization in their community. So he said to the man, You are the son of a black woman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped the khutbah. And he said, Men, Men, Dak, and Fulana. 
He said, who is the one that said that such and such is the son of a black woman? Ta'ab ibn Qais said, Ana ya Rasulullah, it was me, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet وسلم, told him, Ta'ala, come here. And he told him, Unzur fi wujuhi al-qawm. Wa kulli ma tara. Akhbirni ma tara. He said, turn around and look into the faces of the people out here in the Jumu'ah. Turn around and look in the faces and tell me what you see. Thabit, he said, Ya Rasulullah, ra'aytu abyad wa aswad wa ahmar. He said, I've seen white faces, I see black faces, I see red faces. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ajal ya Thabit, lakin la tufaddiu ba'duhum ala ba'd illa bi taqwullahi jalla wa alam. He said, yes, exactly. You see different color faces, but you don't give precedence or you don't give virtue to any one of them except with taqwa. The colors of their faces mean absolutely nothing in respect to where or how they should be viewed in society. And the Prophet Wasallam, he never shied away from this issue. While today we ignore it and our children are left grappling with these issues. It might not be an issue for us, but it is definitely an issue with our children. And they see clearly through the hypocrisy of the, we're all Muslims, we're all brothers, yet when your daughter wants to marry someone from a different culture, it's a problem. Yet when your son wants to marry someone from a different culture, it's a problem. But yet and still, under the umbrella that we're all Muslim and we're all brothers in Islam, نحن إخوة لكن هذه الأخوة لها شروط ما شاء الله تبارك but this brotherhood, it has conditions. But we can't, we can't shy away from these dialogues. We can't shy away from this conversation. The Prophet Sallallahu in his last khutbah, he addressed it. Throughout his life, he addressed it. And this was an issue even in their community. When the Prophet Sallallahu wanted to marry Zainab, Zainab bint al-Jahsh, who was the um, maternal cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Zainab's mother, Umayma, Bint Abdul Muttalib, she was the daughter of Abdul Muttalib, who was the sister of the Prophet's father, Abdullah. So that means that Zainab and the Prophet وسلم, were first cousins. Zainab, when she wanted to get married, she said, min Quraysh. She said, A number of men from Quraysh proposed to me. She said, For Arsal to أختي حمنا إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى أستشيره. She said, so I sent my sister Hamna to go to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and seek consultation from him on who I should marry. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to Hamna, وماذا عليها أن تتزوج من يعلم أن تتزوج ما من يعلمها كتاب ربها وسنة نبيها صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet said to Hamna, why isn't Zainab going to marry someone who is going to teach her the book of her Lord and the sunnah of her Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Hamna said, well men, who are ya Rasulullah? Hamna said, well who is this? O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Zayd, Zayd ibn Haritha. <laughs> he said, Zayd ibn Haritha, who was an ex-slave. Hamna, she said, ya Rasulullah, atuzawwiju ibn ta'ammatik mawlaka? She said, oh, Messenger of Allah, are you going to marry your cousin to your slave? The Prophet Sallallahu said, naam, absolutely. Absolutely. So Hamna said she became to ghadab and shadid. I became extremely upset at the Prophet Sallallahu suggestion. She said, then I went home and I told Zainab what he said. فقالت زينب فأعلمتني ما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فغضبت غضبا شديدا أشد من غضبها وقلت أشد من قولها فقلت أنا خير منه حسبا كيف يزوجني كيف يزوجني زيد بن حارثة وأنا خير منه حسبا So when Hamna came home and she told Zainab the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is suggesting Zayd ibn حارثة Zainab said, I became even more angry than my sister. And I said worse than she said. I said, I'm better than him, ancestry. My lineage is Quraysh. I come from the cream of the crop. He's a slave. How am I going to marry somebody like that? 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse from the Quran. مَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةً إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ وَمَنْ يَعْسِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا That it is not befitting for believing male and believing female when Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter that they will have any choice in it. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has gone clearly astray. This ayah was revealed about the comment that Zainab made. And Zainab, when she found out that the ayah was revealed about her comment, she sent to the Prophet ﷺ, her sister, again, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And she said, I will never disobey Allah or His Messenger. If you see that Zayn ibn Haritha is better for me, then marry me to Zayn ibn Haritha. She said, فَزَوَّجْنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ Zayn ibn Haritha وَقُنْتُ أَرِزًا عَلَيْهِ يعني كنت أضايقه وأترفع عليه حتى طلقني وزوجني النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم She said, so the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم married me to Zayn ibn Haritha but I made his life miserable. I made his life miserable until eventually he divorced me and then the Prophet Sallallahu married me. The point that I'm making is that this classism, it existed in their community, but the Prophet Sallallahu never tired in addressing those issues even till his last khutbah. While today, we say nothing about it and we know it exists. And the fact of the matter is that while we turn a blind eye to it and we act like it doesn't exist, our children, just like they see everything we do in the house as parents, they see all of our flaws, they see all of our flaws as a ummah. And if we don't address it, then we kind of we have to deal with that later on with our children and we have to deal with it Yom Al-Qiyamah in front of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadha wa sallallahu ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslim al-kithira wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.